Hello everyone, how are you? This is Angelos from Spiral Lane Productions and uh, I'm about to do my first review. I've always wanted to do some reviews for RPGs, so this is a perfect chance. We're gonna review Basic Fantasy Role-Playing Game, the fourth edition by Chris Gunnerman. Um, for those of you who don't know, Basic Fantasy Role-Playing Game is, uh, is basically uh, what it states, is a basic template for anyone who wishes to play a simple RPG uh, based on the classic design of games, um, old school stuff. Um, so it's like a template for any type of RPG. Um, I really respect basic fantasy role-playing game because it features a very simple layout and uh, the amazing thing is that basic fantasy RPG is free. You can download the PDF directly from the website for free and you can even order the print books for cost like n very very cheap there's i don't know if the designers even have any profit margin but i really respect uh, their generosity so go ahead and download it if you want we'll go through the basics um, i'm doing this review as i go i mean i haven't even study the book i know what it is about but i would like to discover it at the same time as you do so um of course it goes uh, it goes ahead and starts with introducing the uh, various dice and uh, how the mechanics work uh, i'm not very big fan of uh, introducing the dice and the roles between the player characters and game master i mean I believe as a generation we're past that, we can go right into the, uh, you know, information we want. Um, I don't think that new players nowadays need to be explained what dice are and how they work, but um, in a game called Basic Fantasy RPG, I guess it goes without saying, uh, we kind of have to explain even the basics. So the first pages, of course, are the... Uh, uh, basic guidelines and then we move to the attributes of course basic fantasy rpg uses the standard player character um, attributes uh, strength dexterity constitution intelligence wisdom charisma this is based on old school dungeons and dragons and uh, the modifiers as are expected uh, as expected and uh, then we move to the races i really like the minimalistic design of these black and white sketches oh so in basic fantasy rpg we've got the uh leveling up of classes in the same way as old school dungeons and dragons which i really miss you've got different amounts of experience for each class i really miss that in modern games uh, they are too uniformed if you ask my opinion so for example we've got the cleric here uh he goes he levels up second level needs uh, 1,500 experience points, while the fighter needs 2,000 experience, experience points. And this, of course, happened because classes were not exactly balanced. Uh, and this was a perfect way to balance them out. Uh, different experience thresholds, different progression. It gives a different flavor, a diversity in the party, which I really miss. I grew up with stuff like that, as most of us, I guess. A magic user, most expensive uh, class to level up. And it makes sense because as they develop, as in old school games, they become truly powerful. The most powerful class by, uh, by far. Um, the thief, on the other hand, <laughs> was the uh, fastest class to level up. It was really nice when you play the thief, of course. This also happened because thieves died a lot, a lot in these games. They are the more likely to be killed because, I don't know, they dwell in dungeons too much. They uh, work with traps and stuff like that. They live their lives <laughs> in the extreme. And so we've got the uh, D100 uh, system for thief skills. You roll under and you succeed. I really miss that too. Um, some basic introduction to equipment. 
um, adventuring items, common items, weapons, of course, um, their tables with their damage and their cost, um, some accessories, um, vehicles, and I really love the uh, tables of mundane items. I miss that in RPGs as well. I mean, I want to see mundane items. I want to see tables that include donkeys and uh, wine skins and flasks and stuff that I, I think are being disregarded in uh, modern editions of heroic fantasy stuff. They go right to the uh, how to slim monsters part. You really miss out on atmosphere when you skip stuff like siege engines, for example, or uh, lanterns and stuff like that, because old school gaming is all about dungeon delving and you need this kind of stuff. Uh, I'd rather play an adventuring party that, you know, people argue who's going to have a mirror in their backpack to face a Medusa and, you know, trick the monster other than go ahead and slay it with superpowers that they have. Um, we've got some spells here, clerical spells of various levels, magic user spells up to level 6. I'm not sure how basic fantasy RPG works, but I don't see up to level 9, so I'll have to assume that spells go up to level 6. Fair enough. And then we've got the explanation of the spells. One thing I don't miss about old school games is a very long explanation of spells. You don't have to have paragraphs for each spell. Give me a one-liner. I can figure out the rest. I don't need to know how Cloud Kill, for example, creates a XXX cloud of poison gas which moves at a rate of blah 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 uh, under the control of the caster. Oh my god, just tell me it's a cloud that kills people. I will figure out the rest. Give me the damage dice. I don't need that. I really don't need that. Anyways, um, I know, I'm weird and stuff like that. But for example, look at the fireball spell. This is like four paragraphs of fireball. It's a ball of fire that explodes. What more do you need? You don't need all the, uh, I don't know, combustible objects or substances within the area of effect will generally catch fire. Blah, blah. Of course they will catch fire. It's a fireball. Come on. <laughs> Anyways. Oh my gosh, look at that. What is this? Geese. By means of this spell, the caster compels a living creature to perform some specific ac action or services or alternately to avoid performing some action. This is, I guess it's something like a charm person. More powerful. Anyways, Jesus Christ. Moving on, we've got spells, spells, spells. It's surprising that spells are located in the first part of the book. Usually, it's towards the back pages. I don't know. Um, adventure. So this is a general guide for adventurers. For adventuring, mapping, light, dark vision, this is the kind of stuff you want. This is the essence of role-playing games. I love this. So, um, there's something... Oh, okay. Um, you need to uh, have the uh, adventuring part to, to focus on that, because this is where the, the good part is. Dark vision, I hate dark vision in general. I'm one of these guys. I think it ruins the dungeon experience, but anyways, you've got this here. Secret doors, dungeon survival, good stuff, wilderness movement rate. Um, it's nice to divide exploration mechanics into environments. Dungeon, wilderness, uh, urban, that would be another. Because it's nice to incorporate different mechanics for each environment. It's not only exploration and combat. Um, you've got mechanics for mercenaries, again very important. Modern RPGs don't focus on this stuff because mostly, for example, if you play 5th edition, you don't need mercenaries. You're so powerful, you can handle everything on your own. I really like uh, mercenaries mechanics. Now we've got character advancement again. Encounters, order of play, when the party of adventurers comes in contact with potential enemies, time shifts to combat rounds. Uh, before beginning combat, surprise is checked. Unsurprised characters roll for initiative and act in order of the roles. Pretty straightforward basing role playing. 
I would argue that it would be even better to just split initiative into enemies and allies and just go ahead with combat or just take turns between monsters and uh, player cards and stuff like that. You don't need to roll for initiative. If you're into very crunchy mechanics, go ahead, be my guest. But in my experience, it doesn't play a very important role. Climbing and diving, charging, disengaging. Good stuff. Uh, attack bonus table. So we've got different uh, bonuses when attacking according to classes, fighter, cleric, magic user. Uh, fair enough. And then we've got some mechanics for uh, missile fire melee combat, missiles that miss, stuff like that. Some uh, more mechanics on more combat options, brawling, wrestling, Wrestling is very, uh, pretty much broken down into details, that's interesting. Uh, morale, I've uh, also experimented, experimented in wrestling a lot and stuff like that, but if it becomes too complicated, it just misses out on the fun. If you have to figure out grapple mechanics and how to avoid grappling and stuff like that, it becomes a pain in the ass, so I would suggest keep it as simple as possible. Morale. Morale is another interesting mechanic that many systems don't focus on. And uh, we have to say that it's pretty important because in everything, uh, books and movies and stuff like that, adventures are always uh, infected by, the, by their morale. Anyways, turning the undead. Energy drain, let's move on a bit. Of course, of course we've got saving throws, old school stuff. Uh, you have to roll over the uh, difficulty level, as you can see. Better than old school games. You have to roll under for some weird reason. Uh, monsters. Beasts of Burden. Monster descriptions. Again, for monsters, I have to be uh, honest. For me, it's the same as spells. One-liner. I don't need a whole paragraph on bears. I know what a bear is. Actually, I don't have much knowledge about stuff. Anyways, uh, when it comes to history and nature, but I can figure out what a bear is. I mean, yes, if you have a monster called I don't know, Aracocra, and you are not, and you are not familiar with uh, what an Aracocra is, go ahead and describe it. But you know, this is, for example, I don't need two paragraphs on the board for God's sake. I love the artwork. I don't know. The older I get, the more simplistic stuff I like. Not crazy about the cartoony stuff, I always hate that in games. I want serious, old-school, grim art. But anyways, most of this stuff is very good. So I've got a lot of pages for monsters, of course, because there are a lot of monsters. Games like these, based on... Classic Dungeons Dragons have even more monsters than you actually need to. For example, what is this baby Groot thing? <laughs> it's a wood golem. My God, looks terrible. Uh, by any means, I don't need to. I don't wish to offend the designer. Eh? The work is great. It's just personal taste. I love the uh, Hydra, for example. Looks like a multi-headed dragon. Exactly that, like it's supposed to be. Always with a <laughs> invisible stalker. This monster, I remember in the second edition, it was just a blank white space designer had no job at all. <laughs> Anyways, monsters, monsters, monsters. Oh, I believe it could be monsters all the way through the end of the book. Eh? No, we've got treasure. I would take a guess that. Treasure is somehow connected with the experience points, like most old games. I don't know, I didn't bother reading that. I'm sorry about that. Uh, magic weapons, rare items, magic potions. I Okay, yes, it's good to have a table of uh, treasure magical items um, that correspond to the loot of each monster. Um, 
got some dungeon encounters. It's always cool to include random tables in any kind of rulebook. It's always cool to to include as many random tables as you can because it's the essence of good DMing. Uh, different environments, different uh, generators, loot, um, anything, NPCs, whatever you want, monsters, anything. Uh, wilderness encounters, there you go, that's nice. Um, you roll to, to d8 based on old school stuff, this sort of uh, tables. Creating an NPC party, that's nice stuff as well. Dealing with players, always, always hopeful. I like this paragraph, hopeless characters. Sometimes a player will roll for ability scores, look at the ability scores rolled, and declare the character hopeless. Of course, no player can be required to play a character with less than 9 in the first 4 scores, since all 4 classes would be unavailable to that character. However, you, as the game master, might choose to allow the player to re-roll a character with scores that are overall below average, even if the character isn't as hopeless as this. Well, yes, I guess that is a good approach. I mean, I don't like, um, you know, spoiling players and stuff, or attending to their every need, because in my experience, players that need too much stuff, even if you grant them the favors, will need something else later on. But you don't have to be an asshole, just... There are two ways to go about this. Either allow them to reroll some stuff, uh, not too much because other players might feel, you know, that uh, they are being excluded from some personal preference, I don't know. Or explain to them that as soon as this character dies, it's, gonna, it's not going to be long, they're going to roll for a new one. It's nice to have multiple characters. You don't have to create a single character with a huge backstory. Multiple characters, change them as you... As the story progresses, it's fun for everyone. Death and dying, optional rules, yes. Well, my opinion, death is death. Nothing, uh, you don't have to, to make a big deal out of it. Create a new character, go go play from the beginning. Or join the story, whatever. whatever. Save or die, poison, ability rolls. Um, oh. Magic item research, that's nice. Magical research. It's always nice to come up with some mechanics that allow a simple crafting system or a magic research, allow some versatility in the game, give some extra roles for creative players. Don't make it too complicated. Don't include components, stuff like that, or not complicated ones. I've fallen into this trap as well. But it's always good to have some options. Uh, creating a dungeon adventure, that's beautiful. I'd like to see stuff like that in rule books. how to create a dungeon adventure. That's very nice. What else? Designing a wilderness adventure. Ooh, that's nice. Even better. That's a very pleasant surprise. Um, this is beautiful stuff. Strongholds. Perfect. Strongholds. A huge chapter in old school games. Classes gain uh, at some point of the story a stronghold or a keep or a tower for magicians. It's beautiful stuff. Figure out some simple mechanics to incorporate a headquarters for your players. You can create beautiful sandbox adventures, uh, you know, that revolve around the stronghold. Create a hex crawl uh, map. You're good to go. Endless adventures. Beautiful stuff. And that's it, I guess. Basic fantasy RPG, as you... Uh, I don't know if you are into this kind of reviews. I know it's very fast and maybe a bit, um, I don't know, on the spot because I don't really study the books. I just, you know, flip through them and see their layout and just comment on anything I see. For me, it's, I don't know, it's a stress-free way to speak about role-playing games and I really enjoy it. So if you liked it, please subscribe and like this video. Uh, if you want to start a conversation, uh, write me in the comments. I'm better in writing than speaking English. It's not my native language, as you can understand. But uh, when it comes to writing, I'm more focused, more structured. So go ahead and tell me your opinion for uh, this game. 
Uh, if I will not forget, I will include the link for a PDF download of this beautiful game in the description of the video. So I'll see you next time.